Welcome to Steelers Talk. We've got some big news. TJ Watt's contract is officially done. We're also going to be answering some of the questions you guys left for us. All of this is coming up, but please first like this video if you're excited that Watt is paid. I'm excited. It was about time. I'm excited to get into all of the contract details. So Ian Rappaport was the first to announce that this contract is finally going to happen. I'm, like I said, excited that it's over with. There's going to be no more holdouts. TJ Watt is getting paid. He is now going to be the highest paid defensive player in the league, and it's well-deserved. He has signed a four-year deal with a $112 million extension. The deal includes $80 million in guaranteed money. He's going to make an average of about $28 per year. So this is a good, good situation for TJ Watt. And again, it's so well-deserved. Big Ben said a couple days ago that he wanted Watt to get paid. And I think that all of us wanted him to get paid. His players are excited for him. His brother's excited for him. He tweeted out, let's go. And he put a fun gif of Tommy Boy in there. Juju took to Twitter saying, congrats, TJ. And my favorite one was from Joe Hayden. He said, I could cry. Congrats, fam. You deserve every penny. I got to Pittsburgh your rookie year, and you have done nothing but display professionalism and play at the highest level in the league. Let's get it, brother. Swat at TJ. And this was only a matter of time. I think we all knew that this was coming. It sounded like in the last couple of days that it was coming together, that they kind of knew where they were going to stand on this. They had the guaranteed money issue. And you know what's funny is Adam Schefter actually tweeted out a little bit later in the day that his agents actually wanted more. TJ Watt's agents were wanting to get more money. And TJ Watt was like, you know what? I'm going to be the highest paid defensive player in the league. I'm happy with this. I got a game to focus on. So we're going to worry about that. I'm going to take my money and be happy. And I think it's well-deserved, like I said, Take a look at what he's done just in 2020 alone. He had 53 tackles, 23 tackles for loss. He had 15 sacks and 41 quarterback hits. He is now not only among the highest paid player, but paid players in the league defensively, but he is the top guys. When you look at Joey Bosa at 27 mil per year, Miles Garrett, 25, Khalil Mack, 23.5, Aaron Donald at 22.5. TJ Watt now is on top of all of them with 28. Do you guys think that this was a good deal? Grade it for me. If you think it was awesome, give me an A. Kind of work down from there. B, C, D, F. Want to hear your guys' rating on this TJ Watt deal. Now let's get into what this video was originally supposed to be, which is a mailbag video. This is where we have you guys submit questions and we try to answer all of them for you. But obviously, Watt took priority. We wanted to touch on that first, but let's talk a little bit about some of the comments that we got earlier. First one coming in was from Donnie Dixon. He said, hashtag Steelers, TJ Watt for Defensive Player of the Year. And it's a perfect transition from talking about his new contract to whether or not he can be defensive player of the year. I think he absolutely can. I think he definitely will be, actually. I think last year was an argument that he could have been. And he's put up, I mean, what, like 13 sacks each season last three years. He is well deserving of that place. So I think that there's a high chance he could take on that role and be defensive player of the year. But what do you guys think? Do you think that he will win? If so, type W for win. If not, type L for lose. Next up from Carrie F12, we've got hashtag Steelers. Should the Steelers pick up Richard Sherman? There's a lot to unpack in this question. And it's not a terrible option if you're kind of dealing with the stuff off the, if you're kind of not worrying about the stuff off the field, but you can't just ignore it. We've seen how the things that guys have done off the field has impact the way that they are in the locker room, kind of the team camaraderie. So you get that handled. He had some problems during the off season. As you can remember, he was arrested in the summer after drunkenly driving his SUV and crashing into a construction zone. He reportedly tried to break into his in-laws home. And now Sherman is facing five criminal 
charges. So this is a problem. Obviously, you'd want to get this all handled. You don't want to pick up a guy like this and then deal with all of the drama that happened during the offseason. But if he's cleared from all of that and things are all good, I mean, he took to Instagram and Twitter, kind of said, hey, I was dealing with a lot mentally and emotionally. There was a lot going on. I messed up. I apologize. So I'm hoping things are good on his end with that, because if they are, I think that this would be a good choice for C- uh, for the Steelers. I mean, you've got good guys, obviously, in Joe Hayden and Cam Sutton, but Richard Sherman could be a good guy that would provide depth. You could get him maybe a little bit cheaper than you'd expect. I'm not saying that it wouldn't be expensive. It absolutely would be. But Sherman has reported, it's been reported that Sherman said, hey, I'll take, you know, a little bit of a shorter term deal in order to, you know, wait it out, hoping that the salary cap kind of increases over the next year. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think the Steelers should sign Richard Sherman? It's a hot take, but I'm interested to know your guys' thoughts. S for sign, P for pass. Let me know in the comments. Next question we got is from Patrick Square. He says, will the Steelers make the playoffs? It's a good question. It's a tough question because there's some this, – this division has improved. You're now – in a competitive division with some great teams, I think it's going to come down a lot to this offensive line and the team's ability to run the football, utilize Najee Harris, kind of take that pressure off of Big Ben a little bit. And they definitely will be in the hunt if they can do that, in my opinion. But again, you're going to be dealing with a hard AFC division and also a hard conference. My prediction, though, is that Kansas City will come up up, up on top with the overall number one seed. I think Bills will take that second seed. Titans will take the third. But I do have the Steelers winning the division, taking that fourth seed. I think the wild card's going to look a little bit like Browns at the fifth spot, Ravens at the, uh, at the sixth, and that new seventh spot is going to be the Chargers. Let me know if you guys think that this is kind of accurate. I might be a little bit wrong, but I like the Steelers winning the division. I think that they have absolutely the potential to do this. Next question we've got is from Steel City Power. If the season is a failure, just like the last one and the one before and so on, should Tomlin finally be let go? Hashtag Steelers. That's a really bold question. Bold question. I mean, to call last season a failure is a little bit dramatic, in my opinion, and not to like discount all of the decline that happened towards the end of the season, because I get it. But you can't win 11 games straight, make the playoffs and call it a failure of a season. I mean, come on. Even with the decline that happened, that's it's hard to win 11 straight in a row. So it'd be tough for me to imagine that if the Steelers made the playoffs this year, that they would even consider firing Mike Tomlin. I mean, he's been a guy that's only missed five uh, five playoffs in his 14 years there. He took the two Super Bowls, one, one, 2008. Tomlin's a pretty good coach. And I think anyone that kind of wants him fired right now, it's, it's kind of an ignorant choice in my opinion, but Hey, let me know. Do you guys think Mike Tomlin's in the hot seat? If so type Y for yes. If not type N for no. Now, I think that Mike Tomlin is, like I said, a fantastic guy, but I get where Steel, Steel, what's his name? Steel City Power is coming from, where he thinks that he could potentially be on the hot seat. But again, you can't have a team making the playoffs and then expect for them to fire your head coach. All of this is up for debate, and we'll get into way more of this as the season continues. Follow and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all things Steelers.